Hello, and welcome to another episode of Redstone Engineering Essentials. Today, we will look at a few different designs for both short-term clocks and long-term clocks. Clocks are extremely useful for almost any circuit, especially practical ones, such as farms in survival mode. With that, let's jump right in. Alright, so first, let's talk about the fastest clock in the game, which is a one tick on, one tick off clock. I call this a two tick clock rather than a one tick clock like you might see on the wiki or something, because I like defining it by the cycle length rather than the ticks that it's off and on, because it can get kind of muddy when you start talking about like three tick and four tick cycle clocks. But the f best design that I like for this is a comparator and subtract mode. So you put a comparator and subtract mode and you put both the sides in like that. And when it's off, it's off, and then when you power the rear of the comparator, it'll give you a one tick pulse like this. So, you grab it from these two sides, because these sides won't work with how the subtraction works, and then you take that and put it wherever you want. I like this design because it's not only compact, but it makes really easy disabling and enabling, because this basically just asks for a lever, and then you can enable and disable without having to do any weird transistor stuff like you do in the next design. Alright, so the next design is probably the most iconic clock design in Minecraft, and this is the classic repeater loop, where you take at least two repeaters and you put them in a loop like this. This design right here, when they are one tick delayed, is just as fast as the comparator design that we saw, but unlike the comparator design, we can't just hold the signal down. You actually need to seed it with a signal that's just as fast in order to get the clock to run. That is the main limitation of this design, but I think it's easily mitigated by using a transistor and a monostable circuit. So a transistor will either close or open this circuit here, and then this gets attached to a lever, which then also attaches to a monostable circuit, which inputs a one tick pulse length into the clock. So when you pull the lever, this happens and it seeds the clock, and then when you undo the lever, it will turn the clock off. You can also adjust these for a longer clock cycle. And then you can also add repeaters down if you need it to be really long. Now, the main limitation of this is the fact that if you need really long-term clocks, you have to just keep adding repeaters, which could be super annoying. And, like, it could even be super, super cost-inefficient in order to do that if you need, like, a really long clock, like 10 minutes or something. The next design will give us a way to make really long-term clocks, and it will also allow us to make extremely long-term clocks by just chaining them together. So let's take a look at that. Alright, so my favorite design for the long-term clocks, I'll probably just build and then explain how it works afterwards. But it uses hopper mechanics in order to take advantage of the fact that hoppers take 2.5 redstone ticks to push an item into a hopper. So you can fill all five slots up and have a really long-term clock. So you first start by putting two hoppers that face into each other, like this. You put an opaque block next to it, and then you put comparators outside of those so that these comparators read from these hoppers. You put blocks here so that the comparators power those blocks and power the torches. You do another pair of hoppers that face into each other here, and then you put comparators here, and then you put an opaque block on top of the hoppers down there, right? So that these get powered and disable those. Then you put one item in the pair that's below, and then you put as many as you want in the top hopper, and however many you, items you have up here will determine how long the clock lasts. And these torches here are what you take your signal from. So like you'll take it from like one side like this, and it will just be on for half the time. So if you need to give it an actual pulse, then you can put an observer next to one of the torches, and it will give you a pulse every single time the clock switches. Now, you are limited to the fact that you only have five slots here. So if you fill up all five slots, and it's still not long enough, you can increase the duration by basically chaining together clocks like this. So, for example, if we filled all five slots, then what we could do is you chain together two clocks. I'll use a non-hopper design clock, because maybe we don't need it to be that long term or something. But yeah, you put repeaters in here. They don't need to be repeaters, but it just helps. And then you invert these signals that go in so that they're always on except for one tick that they're not when the clock comes in. And then you attach another clock to the signals up here. So if we just have like a relatively short clock length, we can just do like a, re a repeater loop or something like that. Then we can get this clock to be a lot longer than it would otherwise be possible to do with just having the hoppers. So if we hook this up, uh, we need to actually hook this up into two different things. So we delay this, we'll delay this one twice, I believe. Uh, 
All right, building on the fly. Let's go. Okay. So, yeah, they need to be delayed at the same time or else it'll be a little bit wonky. But then when you power this clock, what will happen is these will turn off every once in a while. And it will allow these hoppers to do their thing, but otherwise they don't when the signal's on. Which makes the pushing of the items go a lot slower than it otherwise would. Because if we can get rid of these, and we can see how fast it actually normally goes. So it goes this fast normally, whereas when we add the new clock onto it, it goes a lot slower. And you can make this clock as long as you want. If you need like a couple of hours worth of time, then you can hook up two of these clocks together. That's really decent for like wheat farms, for example, or mushroom farms ice farms, what have you, and you can make it as long as you want. And all of the designs covered up to now should cover any length of clock that you'd want. There are a lot of different designs, but these are just my favorite because I think they're the most compact and easy to make. Now, before we end the video, there are two different ways to disable this clock specifically. The first way is to just use a transistor at the end so that when the circuit's cut off like this, this will just always be off and it's as if the clock is off. Now, this has the limitation of the fact that the clock will actually continue running. So, if the clock was just about to fire and then you pull the disable lever, then when you enable it, it won't immediately fire. It, it might immediately fire, it might not, depending on where the state of the clock is in. So, a way to mitigate that is to just pause the hoppers directly. And to do that, you just put a signal into both hoppers and you power it like that. So, now the hoppers are locked. And they'll remain locked until you undo it. The way you disable it just depends on how you want to have it disabled and like the space requirements of your circuit. Alright guys, that'll be it for this episode. I hope you found the clock designs discussed helpful and the discussion around them. If you have a suggestion or some other general comment, let me know. And I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.